Another day and another great opportunity to add value to everybody that is tuning in to the Conquistador podcast. My name is Mauricio Garcia. If it's the first time listening, welcome to the show. This is where we uh, talk about the real secrets that uh, we need to learn about to be able to be successful in business. And today, as always, we have a topic I think is very interesting because uh, a lot of us, at least for me, I remember... Uh, being an you know, starting my entrepreneurship career, and I was so busy working on uh, working on on in, in the business in the business, and not understanding that to be able to get scale scalability, I needed to work on the business. And so today, you know, as every single day, we get the opportunity to hear from a Hall of Fame entrepreneur, a business legend, my friend and partner, Mr. Hubert Humphrey, to whom again I salute today. Hubert, can you hear me? How are you? Uh I can hear you. Good, good to be with everybody, uh, Mauricio. Good to be with you today. And uh, this subject is very, very critical because it's really, it it really is a uh, a dream killer for so many people. So many people that get into a business. Uh, that's why the what are the uh, the statistics are way in the high nineties of of failure in a bit in a uh, for entrepreneurs who get into businesses for myriads of reasons. But one of them is uh, for sure. That they that they they end up just that because they just so bogged down in their business that they that they there's nobody working on their business there's nobody out there with vision looking forward uh, keeping everything moving look, looking in a sort of a holistic way and of course if you go if if you if you're going to work on your business that means you better have hired and or hired or or recruited or brought in somebody uh, a bunch of people that can do the specific things that's needed that 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 can work the, the inside stuff very the, the the in the business part of the business is very critical it's just that it's just that the leader the leadership if he's going to be building something big if you're going to stay small and just run a little small mom and pop business and uh, you're not going to try to duplicate it you're not going to try to get much bigger and you just want to sort of t- treat it as a little commissionable job you you're paying yourself a little salary out of it well that, that, that you don't have to hear too much of this but if you're planning on building a business that's going to grow in size and and, and scope and and, and and build great wealth for a lot of people you've got to be able to go and find those people you got to know how to find good talent and bring them in and 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 then then you got to learn how to delegate or stagnate. I know some people that have brought good people in, but they still jump in there and, and just out of force of habit, or just they haven't, they just don't trust the people enough. They'll just stay in there and get bogged down with them, and they're wasting the pe- people's time and money and and themselves. You know, it's like the eagle in a in a, in a chicken coop. You know, <laughs> you know you you're in there scratching with the chickens. You know, and as, you you know the story there about. But this 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 is a farmer who found this this strange looking little little bird laying out there as a baby didn't quite know what he had and he brought it home and so well, I don't know if it's a, I don't know if, what kind of bird it is I'll throw it in here with the chickens so he threw it in there the chickens but as it grew <laughs> up it grows into this giant chicken it's it's a yeah. it's an eagle well the but but it but the eagle didn't know it was and uh, and it was in there scratching with the chickens and oh, and, and and did not know it was an eagle. There's a there's a lot more to that story, but you get the drift. If we don't want to, I, if you're an eagle, don't be scratching with the chickens. You you got to get out there, look up in the sky, and see. I need to be soaring up in the sky with the rest of those big eagles out there, that are, that are entrepreneurs winning. So you got to learn to delegate or stagnate. Uh, and 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 I, I'll tell you another thing that that. Uh, one of the, the two two of the big uh, strains of the of what I call the failure disease, uh, or is is excuseitis and detailitis. Uh, I'll just skip the excuseitis right now. That's another show. But detailitis is uh, is a killer. I mean, you, you details have to be done, but they've got to be delegated. You you can't be doing the work that somebody you could pay. Uh, Fifteen dollars an hour, or twenty dollars an hour. When you could make a thousand dollars an hour, you could make ten thousand an hour. You could, you know, in our business, you. I look at things, and I look at things in terms of millions of dollars an hour. So if I'm out doing a bunch of stuff that somebody else could do, wow, that's poor business. And so you got to think that way as a business person. That's what that's what we mean by working on your business, and not down in your business. It's a it's not a hard concept. In fact, it's a 
you, you, once you've mastered it and have the success, you, you, you see it, you, you understand it. And, and now you got to incent the people that are working for you. But, uh, but you, but, but, and there's different kinds. They're, 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 they're hourly workers, and then there's the management, and then there's the executives. I mean, so there's different pay scales for different talents and abilities. And then there's people sometimes you, you, you contract out or you, you bring independent contractors or consultants, specialists at different times. But all of that's doing, all of that's helping you with the working in the business part. So, so Mauricio, I hope that helps start off the conversation. Well, well <laughs> very well, I tell you. If I had heard about this concept when I first started, you know, when I thought I had a business, I was really just a self-employed insurance agent. That's what I was. Uh, I called myself a business owner. That's probably where most people are in if they haven't really understood the concept of working on the business. And for most, I think it's a little hey, difficult Bruce, to, to escape from that, like to go from your from your so-called business, which is self-employment, into really building a business because it requires a lot of things like, you know, talent, uh, attraction, and delegation. And we're going to talk about that, but uh, you were about to say something. I just kept talking. What was that? Yeah, well, yeah. Right. No, no, what, no, what you were saying was just right on because if, if you can't master the principle we're talking about on this show here, it, yeah. it's, being in business for yourself can either be the the highest paying, easy work you've ever done, or it can be the lowest paying, hard work you've ever done. And, and all you've got, if, if you don't watch out, you just got a low paying job. You've, you've, you, you, used, you used to work on a job and somebody paid you a pretty good salary, you've been there 10, 15 years, and all of a sudden you're out being your own business person. And if you're down there working in it, and you're mm. not delegating and not growing, and if you go back and compute what you're doing on an hourly basis, you're probably making a whole lot more, more less money than you were when you had a job. You you've got a you just you've gone from a a better job to a worse job because you as an entrepreneur trying to do it all is a terrible job. Now that doesn't mean that I, I know every myself everybody that's ever started a business has to do some of the in the business. You have to work in the business a little bit. Just to, sometimes the economics demand it. So sometimes you just just get started if you're out by yourself. But now, if 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 you're in a business where there's a, a system and there's upline leaders and other mentors that are that are out, that have been through the ropes, in our business, people our people don't have any business getting stuck down in their businesses because we've got hundreds and literally thousands of them over the years that 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 coach these people and let them know that. You don't need to spend six, seven, eight months a year just down in the down in the weeds. Start from scratch being a good entrepreneur. But if you if you're out there and you don't have that, we know you have to have a little bit of. Uh, I'm sure Ray Kroc somewhere when they worked in worked at worked in moving hamburgers and French fries and cooking them. Uh, I, still I, I know sold milkshakes. Still, still probably sold a oh, few milkshake well, machines. Was, oh, well, oh, I'm, I'm sure he probably did, but but uh, he didn't do it long. I know that because his mind was on a much bigger vision, and that's the whole key here. Work, just have, just have that, just understand. There's a, there's the inside of a business, and then there's the outside of the business. There, there's the processing side of the business, and there's the cre, there's the creation uh, of, of 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 the important things called customers and outlets and things that things that are going to expand your business and somebody's got to be working on that side of it and and uh and and, and if that's what that's another reason why I, we talked about a system yesterday hey, that's yeah. why a system is so critical critical but you know today is probably the most important day for um, the people listening to this podcast here's why i say that hubert now understands and he's built some monstrous, huge companies, the largest in, in the financial industry. But he, he stumbled upon a system. He stumbled upon a formatted way of being able to work on the business. And I think that for the people that are tuned in today, this could be that, that show that sparks that, that new vision. And so I guess what I'm trying to say here is that you stumbled upon that you implemented, but you didn't invent that necessarily. You, with experience, you probably added more things with, into it. But people today tuning in could join an already uh, done for you 
system per se, right? That they can just work on. I don't know if if you if you, right. if you if you got the yeah. my my concept what I'm trying to say. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, I I I'll be honest with you, I I haven't invented it. I don't I can't think of a thing I've ever invented. I haven't can't think of a thing that I ever created. I can't think of a thing that I'm the the one that was the first guy that thought of it. But I'll tell you one thing: I am I am one of the world's great imitators. One of the world's great uh, copyists, but I'm very careful what who I copy, very mm. careful what I imitate, and once and but once I've copied it and imitated it, I I, I I I assimilate it. I've had to adapt it. The things that I learned before I got in financial services and met Art Williams, he had this crusade and this great platform and a good start there with that, that nucleus of people that he had spent uh, two or three or four years mastering before he started A. L. Williams. But I, I had, I had also learned about the recruiting and building side, and it took me a while to perfect it. And then by the time I was about, about perfected something I was copying, I plugged it in with him at the right time. And, uh, and his crusade, he had the warhead. I just put a missile on the platform, and he stuck the warhead on that by turning the vessel difference warhead on my delivery system, and there you go. So I didn't invent anything. All I've, all I've done is just know... I just know that you got to have uh, you, you you just got to have a, a, a system. You and you and I also had learned, I had learned that I wanted to build something really, really, really big, and and and, and this system was the only chance for me to go from low numbers to high numbers, and it kept me. And I knew I had to learn to delegate because I because I, there's a part of me that'll that wants everything to be done right and. And I just said, well, just get out of the way and I just do it myself. Well, I had to break myself of that habit and I had to start trusting people and I had to allow people to make mistakes and, and, and do things and realize it's okay. Because then I, then I realized that the guy that's got the most people working in, in, inside of his businesses uh, that's making the most mistakes is probably going to win the game. Mm -hmm. and once I realized that that's how that's how it works. There's no, the, the only perfection you need to be a... Be, be be doing is your perfection of staying staying at the helm and not bogged down and where there's nobody running the ship there's nobody out there uh no there's no visionary uh, looking forward here you you know, you know what i'm saying you gotta you just gotta you just gotta learn to, that whole thing of delegating most people most people are, uh and then you first you gotta have two one you gotta you gotta have something that's very good that you're going to delegate, but it's got to yeah. be somebody very good you're delegating it to. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm, yep. I'm going to hand a baton off, but I better hand it off somebody that's not going to drop it in this relay race. No, because, that makes a lot know. of sense. That makes that makes uh, 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 total, total sense. Uh, I guess to wrap it up for today, I want to give you a testimony. I was in the uh, financial industry you know, before I met, I met Hubert. And I then uh, plugged into his system, went down to Mexico, and implemented the steps, recruited close to 2,000 people into the business, and had distribution in 12 different cities across the Republic of Mexico, the, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the country of Mexico. And so I can tell you that it's like a night and day when you plug into a system and you understand the importance of systematizing things and working on the business, working in the business. So if you're anything like me, maybe, you know, as I was in the beginning, kind of struggling in there, just kind of selling the hamburger, right? Just selling insurance, whatever it is that you may be selling right now. If you're like self-employed and you want to run, want to get plugged into a system that can really help you get scale. And that is a vehicle that has, that is so powerful because uh, you know the financial industry is the largest industry in the world. So imagine being able to apply a system like the one we talk about so much in this podcast in the largest industry in the world, you know, then that is the perfect, it is the formula to help you reach success. Wherever you are now, I'm, I'm sure you're trying to get to a better place. So um, I want to invite sure, let me, you. Yeah, let, yes. let me add, well, before you close it out totally. Yes. One, one, one reason why franchises became so big and by the way, I want to say we are not a franchise, and we don't come under the franchise laws because we, we don't sell franchises. But but it, but the whole the model of formatting is common to franchises, mm -hmm. and, and, and formatting can be put in any business a system. But but here the reason why so many people choose to go to some franchise is that 
just for that reason. They want to just, I don't know a whole lot of stuff. So I, I know I don't have, I want something ready made. I can pay a franchise fee and, and, and they're going to, they're going to, they're going to do the advertising. I got their, I got their big trade name I can use. They're going to supply me products. They're going to supply me a lot of things. And most of these businesses that you go and get get some little dealer, dealership, I don't care what, what product line it is, you, you can find a franchise out there for almost anything. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 and that's great. And that, and that removes a lot of pressure from an entrepreneur. But the thing that most of them can't do for you and don't do for you is that they don't give you a proven system that helps you re- run it and it makes it makes it scale, scalable where you can go out there and just keep repeating yourself over and over and over again. The, the, Ray Kroc was able to was able to do that different than any of the other food franchises for a long time. Now, all of them kind of have some kind of a format system now, and that's how we were able to attack the industry. We were able to bring in something that nobody else had ever done. Now, there's a lot of companies out there now that the people that used to be with us that are out try to copy some version of what we're doing. But they, they don't quite understand the full psychology of it. They have a little bit of success, but they don't have the big success because they haven't uh, understood the, the big success mindset yet. So if Absolutely. you want to plug in, pl- plug into us, you not only get all the things that you would get in most of these companies that, that give you a, a support, but we give you a proven, tested system and the leadership that's still here that knows how to help to transfer that to you you know one of the things i do want to add also is that we we this ship this formatted system has been there but something's happened in the last few years which is like maybe if we use the analogy of um, us trying to reach a, a different planet or trying to reach a different star well maybe reaching a different planet is okay with uh, a rocket and some you know good uh, rocket power but to reach a next star, we need light, maybe faster than light speed. And so what I'm trying to say is that what happened right now is that there is this thing called massive distribution opportunity, social media, the internet, that packed together with this formatted system in the financial industry creates the best opportunity ever existed in history. And if you want to be a part of it, if you want to learn more about how that is or what that is, go to hgiopportunity.com right now. Listen to the explanation Hubert has on there. I think it's the, it's, the, it's the most interesting financial story ever told. You need to hear it and, uh, and get in that vehicle. So go to hgiopportunity.com and uh, hopefully we get the opportunity to, to work together. Hubert, have an awesome day. Thank you for all the value you add every single day. We'll see you tomorrow, sir. All right, see you guys. Take care. Warning, this podcast may change the way you think about business, entrepreneurship, and money forever. The Conquistador Podcast was created for dreamers, entrepreneurs, and leaders who want to conquer their future. 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 To be an epic entrepreneur, you must adopt the right mental paradigms as well as master the art of selling, marketing, and finance. 